so I can fetch the preview in Facebook and it works how, how long is this gonna be well <laughs> I will try to, to squeeze it in one hour yeah yeah I think that's good okay I, I think we are live on YouTube already <laughs> uh, but <laughs> Uh, I'm not used to StreamYard just yet. That's the first time I do uh, it via StreamYard, so I will put the low. So it's sent on page Joe's webinar, and I got a special guest. Thanks for joining me today. That's an honor. What's up, Michael? How are you doing, everybody? Glad to be here. Great, great, great. So, guys, let us know if you can hear us. Uh, drop some comments where you are. Let's some cities, countries. I'd love to see uh, the community. And well, today we have this special uh, software as a service. Wrote most of these pages that we're gonna analyze today are in this industry. And I'm wondering, uh, Steve, if you could uh, share a little bit of a background of yourself uh, before we dive in, as I know you are an expert in that niche, like boosting uh, this kind of pages. And yeah, it's just a great asset to have you. Uh, so people can really get the idea of how to do the uh, SaaS pages. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. So um, like Michael said, I um, have a lot of experience with SaaS companies. Uh, most people would probably know me um, from working at the SaaS company FreshBooks. Um, learned a lot there. I think what you really, the main difference, I think, between doing SaaS and doing just other SEO is that you have so much more data on the other end of things. Like if you're just doing lead gen, it's kind of like almost like e-commerce where you where you know um, you know you can attribute like you know the, the different pages, um, and like especially in terms of not just like e-commerce but with SaaS is like what types of customers are generated through um, certain landing pages. So um, are they going to be like a low low lifetime value, high lifetime value? Um, you know, where they sort of, you just have so much more information with SaaS, which is, um, I think one of the awesome things that can really feed back into your SEO strategies. So, uh, that's why I'm excited to do, um, today's, uh, on page roast regarding, uh, mainly SaaS and, um, yeah, about, um, you know, I also, uh, am an SEO consultant. I work with a number of different SaaS companies beyond just FreshBooks, um, usually in, uh, the Toronto area, we have quite a good scene um, over here. So, um, yeah, pretty well versed in the space and uh, just really excited to dig into some sites today. Awesome, awesome. I was wondering, uh, before we dive in, uh, what kind of issues you can encounter in SaaS products? Because when I was uh, doing some uh, SEO services, when I was still working in the agency, every time we had big corporate client, let's say, it was really a struggle to implement changes. We were waiting for ages uh, to, to do like technical stuff, even to change some, some, some content elements on the pages. So I'm wondering what's your experience in this area? Yeah, um, it's, it can definitely be a challenge. I think the one thing you really, um, you need with doing really any type of client SEO, whether it is SaaS or, e-commerce or lead gen is you have to be able to communicate, um, you know, your strategy and what vision you see for the site. If you don't have that ability to clearly communicate things then you're never going to get buy-in and you're never going to get cooperation, which is extremely important when, um, is, you know, especially if you're doing work as a consultant or an agency, 
Uh, but from within the company, you're going to have other people fighting for these budgets and all that kind of stuff. So you've really got to be able to articulate your vision very well. And that's what's going to help you, um, you know, get the cooperation from the rest of the organization in terms of achieving your goals. Oh, yes. Uh, especially uh, when you can back up yourself with some data, like you can tell that, okay, why you want to do this? And you say, because like every single competitor uh, we have in SERP, has this type of content on the website or they like they are faster they are doing something uh better so when you have the data in, in place it's much 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 easier to uh convince anybody to uh those um like plan changes so yeah that's kind of a great introduction for everyone who want to start um doing some SEO services for SaaS businesses. And let's start with the first uh, victim, victim, maybe not, it's not, that's the wrong word. Uh, that's actually uh, the, the winner of today's uh, analysis. And what about this uh, keyword generative design software? What do you think? Can we start with it? Yeah, for sure. Um, am I sharing my screen right now? Not yet, but I will add it to the stream and yes you are sharing your screen now okay so um i'm in canada so i always uh, use this um uh, thing called Nightwatch, which is i guess uh opens in a non-private window but if i um search for that that keyword what is it generative design software generative design software these guys are already ranking pretty well. Um, they're ranking number three. So this is uh, obviously searching from Google US because I'm in Canada. So um, right off the bat, I think that they um, uh, need, you know, they're already doing a great job. So this is going to be a little bit of a, a more difficult um, thing to uh, give them advice because, you know, once you're in the top three, you're already correlating really highly with the other results. But you can see here that um, the number one result has a featured snippet. So um, let's just open that one up as well, just to take a look and let's open up another competitor and then let's open up finally um, end topology, which is the site we're supposed to analyze. So um, right off the bat, um, I can see that this is more of an informational article, right? This is um, not a landing page um, that, uh, that is designed to sell a product uh, necessarily. It looks like it's from an industry magazine um, and you can see it's also getting a featured snippet here. So um, if I look at the, the client's page here, um, this is much more geared towards um, selling a product or a service, um, which, is, uh, which puts them at a little bit of a disadvantage with Google liking to show um, the informational kind of stuff. So right away, I would say like, what can we add to this page that's going to make it a little bit more informational and sort of blend it in to um, articles like the one you see ranking number one here. So um, right off the bat, we also just mentioned going back to the featured snippet here. Um, we really don't have any type of featured snippet um, uh, uh, optimization here. Like if, if, there, if Google is going to pull the featured snippet, it's gonna pull it from this area. Um, so we don't have a kind of a definition in the same way um, that, that this company does here. Generative software is not CAD software, blah, blah, blah. Um, so whether or not you're, you'd be able to put in some type of featured snippet, um, you know, look at the bolded keywords on the SERP, try and, um, you know, do something that's around 300 or so characters underneath this H1, I'm assuming it's an H1. Um, you know, you'll you'll give yourself a better chance to kind of um, get that featured snippet, right? So um, that's a, that's just one um, suggestion that I may have for you there, because you're already ranking top three. And then um, what else can you do um, to this page to kind of um, make it appear more of an informational intent uh, rather than because um, honestly, like you're pro you're probably one of the only websites that offers this like if i really look at this like there's probably a couple other ones that that really you know offer this this service generative design software or this product so you know you're probably already going to be on page one but um you know what what can you do to kind of make your page a little bit more informational 
Um, you've done that um, on the bottom here, uh, but it's also not very uh, prominently placed on the site. And um, one thing that I would probably recommend is um, up higher in your content is to almost put like a, like a quick links or a table of contents kind of thing. Um, and then make a jump link to this uh, software because that'll give you a number of benefits. Um, just from the reader's point of view, they'll see these questions at the top of the page and then they'll be able to jump to the exact um, section of the content. And then from the user's point of view in the SERP, um, those jump links can either be drawn directly into the meta description or they can be um, shown as site links, which I see happening a lot right now. So Even better, you, right? Yeah. Uh, this is the hack. Uh, when you anchor some titles, I mean headings in the content, they pretty often appear as a site links. Yeah, n now more so than ever. Um, I used to see them more in a section here called jump to, uh, which is uh, exactly there. But now um, for the site links, like this is where you will get um, these anchor text showing up, uh, these jump links showing up, sorry. Um, so what I would um, encourage you to do is um, since uh, this real estate here is going to be limited, like you're only limited to however, but the width of this is, I don't know offhand, um, but you, you're going to want to include some shorter FAQs um, in the content. So what is generative design is probably a good one. Um, and maybe some of these other ones, shorten them up a little bit. So Google has the option to show, um, you know, two or three. The third one will get truncated automatically, like it'll get cut off. But if you have like one short one, one short one, and then a little bit of a longer one that ends with a dot, 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 um, you're going to end up getting more clicks um, because your result basically has more places to click on. So uh, that's one um, right off the bat that I would recommend to you. Yeah, so let's let's spend a little while on the search intent because uh, it seems like uh, the page is not serving like the same search intent as the majority of those pages. And for me, it appears that uh, this query is more for people who are not just ready to buy. They are looking uh, for like, what the hell is this generating design software? Because my principal asked me to buy one, but first I have to know what is this uh, to find out like basically who who is the best provider. So I'm wondering if in the first place, it is the best keyword to, to optimize for with a landing page like this, right? Uh, like just uh, just a, a simple thought on it. That, that's cool that they are already ranking free but it seems like a little bit they are off the demand behind the search query. Yeah, and um, you, another thing that I think goes without saying or um, bringing some of these people also ask questions into um, your page, which Surfer makes it really easy for you. Um, so th this is basically you're anticipating the searcher's next um, question. And if they land on your page and you're and you're already answering some of those second and third questions that um, for some reason my, my screen is a little bit frozen. Uh, if you're answering those second and third questions that the user is already going to have after Googling generative design software, um, you're going to you're going to likely keep them on your page for longer and you're going to decrease the chance that this person is going to go back to the SERP to sort of figure out, oh, well, is this AI or um, was what is Revit? generative design software, what is generative technology, um, all of these sort of things. I'm, I'm running the audit on the second screen and I can tell you that AI is NLP entity and it is not used within that page's content. So uh, definitely there's a, a plenty of room to improve uh, when it comes to uh, like uh, providing the information and uh, allowing Google to categorize uh, this uh, type of content uh, as the best answer for the search query. Yeah, and you can even look at, um, like if I go to this site again and I'm gonna check, I can see that Google is not pulling their meta description, right? So go this is their regular meta description. It's more sales-based, um, take full control of your engineering. Whereas here it's pulled a very informational um, meta description, which is going to give you a hint at what type of um, search intent this SERP is for. 
you know, that's something that can, can really give you a lot of cues, whether it's your site or another site. Look at if Google's pulling a different meta description, that meta description is going to really hint at what the search intent is for that search. Oh yes, makes total sense. Um, I think I will, uh, I will, like, well, I will just share my screen for a second to show the audit. Maybe you can make some comments as well. Uh, I will just add myself to stream because um, <coughs> the, the, the most important element of of these audits with this eighty twenty rule in place is basically the true density. Uh, and it's uh, the way to optimize this content, not for this exact keyword or for exact keywords plus its variations, but uh, it's more natural because it's optimizing the whole set of terms that are contextually relevant, uh, especially those NLP entities. And with just a, a, a glance uh, at, at this list, uh, I feel like it's missing ton ton of those entities and really relevant terms considering uh this this industry so uh, ranking number three already with just 800 words uh, comparing to the guys uh being in front uh the article you mentioned steve assembly magazine is three and a half thousand roughly long so probably putting uh, themselves within like between 1,000 and a half and 2,000 do not change this landing page into uh, like really broad article. That will be uh, basically the way to go. And it's it's a task for one, maybe two, maybe three hours to add a little bit of content that also includes those entities. And well, that's, that's the only suggestion I have. If you want to try to improve your rankings, just add those missing entities. And like you said, um, mix them within those uh, people also ask questions and stuff like that. And it will be fairly easy to, maybe not fairly easy, that's just the wrong word. Because if you are already ranking three, everything becomes a little bit harder. But uh, with this sort of optimization for like the bigger set of keywords, that's what I experienced with with another uh, another person doing the NLP optimization with me. Was that uh, even though they were ranking really high for a competitive keyword, they just optimized it like this way, and 150 new keywords popped up in this, in 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 the um, like a monitoring tool. So it was basically broadening the horizon and allowing Google to rank you for more keywords. So uh, yeah, I think that's the way to go uh, in this in this situation. Yeah, and I mean, Michael, you, you probably um, are so used to it, but one of the things I really love in Surfer is when you can show the examples of how other sites are using those terms. So if you're stuck in terms of like, you're like, how do I create, you know, um, how do I, add that, like this is going to show me right there um, exactly how other sites are using these um, NLP entities, right? So you're uh, right. Yeah, just it's, it's it, especially if your writer gets stuck, just like point them to this section and, and this will really help. This is something that helps with the research too. It, w when I'm talking to clients on some video walkthroughs and stuff like that, I'm like, what the hell, if this, is this keyword really relevant to the content and I, and then click on examples that even though I don't know anything about that industry, I can imagine, okay, that might be relevant because this is sort of a uh, sentence that makes sense, right? So it makes you kind of, maybe not an expert, but at least a person who, who knows what he's talking about uh, with just this tiny help of, of, of those examples. So yeah, you are totally, totally right about this. Um, and well, uh, some some summary for this one. Uh, what would you recommend in the first place? Just, uh, sorry, what else can I recommend for this site? Uh, uh, I, I like a summary. The one thing that is the most important in this uh, in this situation. Yeah, I think bringing in a little bit more informational intent into the page is probably going to help you. Um, compete uh, with that top result. I mean, you saw how many words um, they're doing. And like, 
I'm, I'm, I'm not just like you have to do like that many words, but you, what you want to do is cover like those topics in order to get to that sort of, um, you know, uh, correlation. Um, I'd also say just with um, your, your supporting content here, it's, it's um, nice that you have these sort of guides and stuff. Um, just make sure you're always linking back to um, your generative design page from here, which it doesn't look like you're doing. Um, these are also sort of look like more like gated assets. So um, even on this one, you're li not linking back to your money page. You're linking back to the guide about it. Um, so just, yeah, make sure you're placing those internal links in the really important pages. And um, try try for a featured snippet. See what you can do there. Um, like. Uh, if, if you can put something there or, um, you know, maybe in a lower H2 and then like around 300 words of copy uh, with some some of the bolded keywords from the SERP, you, you just might be able to get that featured snippet. Yeah, makes total sense. And I feel, I, I feel like just implementing those simple elements uh, can boost uh, this page's ranking. Maybe if not for this particular keyword, then or uh, a, a set of keywords that are within that cluster along with generative design software. Uh, yeah, I will just check the cluster uh, briefly because I feel like it will be pretty pretty broad just by clicking here. And yes, this cluster is super broad and we have tons of keywords we can rank together uh, along with this generating design, design software. So yeah, definitely improvement is possible. So. Um, let's move on then to the next one. Uh, um, I, I thought about skipping this bouncy castle uh, as the last one. And what about this e-commerce customer service software? Sure, let's pull it up. Um, Delight Chat. So um, I checked this site out. This is the page that they want to rank e-commerce customer software. Um, this site is actually like really nicely designed. I like, um, you know, just even looking at their homepage, it's very fun, inviting, friendly. There's a lot of Drake on here. Um, <laughs> I don't know if everyone will love that, but um, it's, you know, it looks like a very modern site. And it also looks like they've done a really good job with creating all of these um, comparison pages and alternative pages, which um, is fantastic. Um, the thing about this site is it's a brand new site, so it has very little authority. I think it was a DR15 or, or so, um, and it's also um, not even launched yet, right? So it's joined the waitlist uh, beta right now. So they, they have done a good job, and I know that you want to rank this page, so we'll, we'll look at this page too. But um, they've done a good job in terms of creating all these um, useful landing pages, but what I don't see here is um, like a real sort of power page lead magnet type of um, article. You know, maybe this glossary um, would be one thing, but uh, the glossary is not to me like that big of a, a deal. Like I don't see somebody um, getting so excited about an e-commerce glossary that they're going to want to link to it. Um, so I would say just in, or, in order to give yourself a really good chance at this e-commerce customer service software, you probably need to drive more links into some sort of um, like link bait, like power page sort of thing, just to raise the overall uh, domain's authority and, uh, and you know, do basically that type of link building to, uh, to get you to a better place in order to give yourself a good chance to rank. Um, so uh, let's look at this. Um, the keyword was um, e-commerce customer service software, I believe. Yes, yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, so this this H one to me is 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 has the words, but it doesn't have those words intact. Um, so to me, like e-commerce customer service software support like it, it 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 this is more this is like i guess good good copywriting but i think there needs to be a little bit more of a balance with seo um in this in this for me if they were half spot that would do but yeah. uh, at the beginning of the journey exact in h1 seems like a no-brainer yeah that's a great point um if you're hubspot and you have that kind of authority google will just give you um you know points for including all those words 
but um, especially like even beyond SEO, just searching for um, e-commerce customer service software and then coming here, like if there's not an exact tie between the H1 and the and the title tag. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of, I, I agree with Michael that since your site is very low authority, we need to give it the tightest like relevance possible. Um, then, you know, the, this is good uh, that you have that in your H2 again. I'm assuming that's an H2. Um, then we're going to kind of go into some um, uh, sort of pain points, I guess, which is also good. Um, benefits, benefits. Um, see, now, if you're, I think this is um, like mostly around Shopify. If, if you're around around Shopify, like I, I don't see that like being like screamed out at me. Like I do see a small Shopify logo here. I would have like a large section for like Shopify customers. This is the product for you. Um, I don't see that in general here. Um, if you look at a site like uh, like pr privy.com, um, they've gone all in on, on Shopify. And whereas you've kind of just like mentioned it as like one of the main things that you kind of do, but um, it's not it's not really like that loud and obvious here. So I would probably just from a conversion standpoint, um, uh, you know, add that and add your Shopify app store button here and stuff like that. Uh, more benefits here. Um, pretty standard. Yeah, pretty standard stuff. Not really a whole lot of SEO value in 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 much of this content. Um, you know, I'd love to see what the SERP analyzer has to say about um, what these other sites going for this keyword are actually doing. Um, but you know, like I would I would also um, I'm, I use I use this um, SEO minion extension quite a lot to look at headings, and it looks like you know you've actually only got one H1 and then no H2s, which is not the end of the world, but it's still a little bit odd. Um, usually you would have like something like this inside an H2 um, instead of just only H3s. And if that's because your developer likes this or your designer likes the style of the H3, well, just adapt your H2 and, and make it look like that because this is a bit weird. Um, and also like there's, you know, things like, things that are just going to be like totally kind of irrelevant to the main keyword. Like you're not, you're, you're going to want to make those like H threes or H fours. And it just seems like you have a lot of headings going on here that are all H three. So it's not really a good hierarchy uh, in terms of how I'm seeing it here. And this is SEO minion, just in case you guys are wondering, Michael, any other comments from you? Yeah. Uh, first one is that this site is cannibalized by the homepage uh which is well actually with that low amount of authority for me it's uh well not too surprising let's say as probably homepage has a couple of backlinks and this target page has probably zero i didn't check that but i'm guessing so from 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 my perspective it's like really nice and well made but from the seo perspective as you said it's missing quite a lot of uh like there's a long way ahead of them okay they got these uh alternatives pages and conversion pages that do great job for fresh books uh i know that because i know the guy who is writing these uh so they are really really uh helpful for uh like stealing some sort of branding of the other guys <clears throat> not bad practice at all uh but uh i would say that these guys should probably build more pages uh, within this big cluster of topics around uh, customer service software. So I basically created the content planners. I wish I would just take over the screen for a second and I will show you that uh, for the Shopify customer service software, if we are about the Shopify, we have like 60 clusters with uh just this informational and customer investigation intent about chats for shopify about customer services for shopify about uh order manager for shopify's and shopify help desks and they are every 
of these clusters should probably maybe not probably but for sure should have a separate directly directly targeting landing page that will help people decide that the shopify help desk the best one is is this one so i would try if you are at the beginning of your journey build some uh like build a hub uh this glossary this is awesome and it works for example for the agency uh that i was working for they also have seo glossary and it built them ton of uh, like relevant traffic maybe not converting maybe not selling stuff but relevant traffic uh, that build up these pages and from these pages they can internally link to their money pages so they won uh, by having this kind of glossary but they also have quite a lot of uh, like uh, mm, credibility already so they could afford on SEO glossary and I think that SEO glossary for this page is I mean a, a little bit too high and most likely those smaller uh, smaller clusters like like here e-commerce customer service uh software uh that will like small business help desk software enterprise e-commerce help desk software uh, customer engagement uh this kind of supports uh like x card support chatbots stuff like that all of those like topics around uh helping people buy the products they will do definitely they will do the job for uh, this domain to grow and as for uh this particular uh page we have this keyword analyzed here and i just noticed that the home page is ranking on a position 47 so almost nowhere uh and we have the target page with which has slightly better content score but uh if we take a closer look at uh like those entities in use and stuff like that if i sort them by the action i just get e-commerce customer service software nlp entity not used at all on wow. this well, so it's it's even missing an exact. That's uh, what we talked about in the H1, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At least H1, while the suggested range is even up to five times. So these guys are really using this exact. Uh, let's take a look. Oh, well, actually, just a single competitor is using. So, uh, yeah, I would use it anyway. If that's my target keyword, and there is a, at least one competitor using this keyword, it means that uh, it definitely uh, it's definitely a good idea to have it too. Uh, maybe those other guys are like strong enough to afford not using it. Maybe they use some sort of variations of that keyword, but in yeah, general, uh, yeah, ecom customer service software. You can probably spin that a few ways. Oh yes. Uh, so as you can see, uh, similar situation, uh, tons of uh, missing entities, uh, a, a little bit uh, not enough content, especially to the X card who is winning this SERP, uh, maybe not just because of having more content on the page, maybe that's a coincidence, but if there is someone on a top position sending you a strong signal that is winning this SERP and uh, he's an outlier maybe it's a good idea to copy them maybe they being outliers uh it's something that differentiate them from them from the others and i would probably try to to uh increase uh a little bit to chase these guys especially that we have a lot of entities to include every time when i see possibility to add more content so i'm not outlier like above the uh the average and I see missing entities is just a no-brainer to prepare some sort of small FAQ, maybe uh, a few content boxes and put it somewhere, maybe not on the above the fold section, but uh, in general, at least, at least somewhere on the page in the middle, maybe at the bottom, okay. Uh, but having exact above the fold H1, uh, that will be just a, a good idea for these guys. Um, final thoughts for me it's like they are on a good way to uh to achieve the success as they haven't launched yet and we are already roasting them and commenting that they are doing good pretty good so um if they follow the pace 
I think they can make it. Yeah, I think so too. I think they've got um, a nice design that is going to make people link to them more often. Um, they've obviously taken a lot of care in that. Um, I would go try and go beyond just the glossary to see what else you can um, target. There's so much content around Shopify, um, you know, that that you can basically find stuff. Like if you use, for example, keyword Cupid. Um, dot com and type in you know Shopify or e-commerce and stuff like that you'll get massive amounts of uh, of you know cluster clustering options for for different content so um, a, along with the surfer tool so you know you can basically just look in there to try and find out what else you can do that'll get you links and um, just one last comment on this am I sharing my screen or can you not yet but I will do um, right now so you are. So on your e-commerce glossary, you've got read more, maybe something like get full definition would be better, but um, you're, you've got this page and this page really doesn't do anything to tell me what delight chat is, right? So if this is a page that people enter through SEO, um, you're not gonna get a lot of conversions off of this, but it's almost like there is no place to convert on here, right? Like, what do I have to do? Do I have to go back to the home page and then join? the wait list or whatever, there's just no, there's no call to action here at all. And I have no idea what your site does if I just land on one of these blog pages. So maybe it's something else to think about. I wish there were at least some contextual internal links back to the money pages, at least. That's yeah. the only value I, I would find in here. Yeah, this is an external link, right? So this is not which, yeah, I mean, it's fine, but maybe you can also put that at the bottom where it's not gonna be like clicked as much. Um, and yeah, just something, some use these, if, if people are gonna be driving links into these pages, utilize internal linking and just give me some idea about what Delight Chat is here. Maybe like even a pop-up for your email newsletter or something um, to make use of the traffic that's going to this page. Yep, makes total sense. So, um, who are we going to roast now? Do you want to do the cloud tutorial? Who? The, are, are we not going to do these guys? Sorry. Yeah, yeah we, we, we are. We are. Yeah, the cloud. Definitely. Let's go. Let's go with it. I, I, I really have a small uh, font in, in this Excel sheet, and I just can't see it. No <laughs> didn't know is a url so let's go with the faq software keyword uh screen is yours yeah so um michael and i were talking like about this specific site and um faq software um not really being something like a whole lot of people um search for right so F faq software like i i see you know like i see like various ads for this, but like, I don't, I don't know. I don't really see the type of, maybe I'm wrong, but like, I don't, I don't see this as being like a viable keyword for, for this, for this company at this point. Um, you know, may, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but um, like the, the other thing that I, that I wondered about this site was um, like, you know, what is the FAQ software that they actually offer, right? So um, there's just kind of, um, you know, it's, it's, it's basically, I think what it is, it's for um, uh, uh, instead of people contacting your, your customer service for them to go through, um, you know, a help section and, and find the, the stuff that they want. But um, I'm actually not sure that that's, communicated here at all like if i don't know um what what this is or if i if this site does end up ranking for um faq software which it, it doesn't even have um in its uh in its title tag um then it's 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 gonna just be really i'm just gonna be scratching my head and i don't know like that like what your product is right um, so that's that's my main comment um, on this one. I, I'm sorry it's not like um, there's not just like not a ton to work with on this site. It looks good. Um, the other thing that I'll, I'll say too is um, on your homepage, putting all of these um, uh, 
blog posts on the bottom of your home page is was a very popular thing like back in the day when there was like freshness scores and stuff like that but to me like you know now in, in like in in 2020 2021 seo i actually don't like putting these on a home page because if you think about it it's completely changed every time you add a new um, heading it's going to add a different h2 or h3 there um, it's going to change your content constantly on the page that you're trying to rank for um, it's just going to add like a lot of variables to the page where it doesn't need to be it needs to be like nice and steady and you just doing like those fine adjustments from serp, SERP analyzer so to me, this makes it really difficult to use a, a tool like SERP Analyzer because this is always going to be changing. And you also have 12 articles here, which I think is way overkill um, for, for your homepage. Yeah, it's, it adds tons of unnecessary clutter. And basically, uh, it creates some sort of duplicate content, at least for those leads to these articles, which I can, can you try to like select this content? Uh, like, is it, I mean, yeah, the the lead oh yes yeah, so the lead is is not a, an anchor right no it's just the heading being an anchor so yeah. all, all the content below seems like the part of uh the home page basically as it's not leading anywhere it's basically uh like a knowledge box it could be a glossary it could be a testimonial it's just like a, any other element of the page which is a little bit ruining uh um those uh densities every time you add something uh, you have to pay attention to it so uh, i would i would avoid it like you said steve but maybe if you if you really want to keep them just get rid of those leads and just keep the, the headings clickable or maybe just the hero images that that that, that will be probably enough to let people in uh to these blog posts uh without messing around with content on your uh on your page and actually this site is not ranking bad uh, for this keyword because it is ranking position 17 with pretty high content score uh being 78 that is the highest content score i can see uh in the in the in the top um, in the whole top 50 actually so do you want to share your screen oh i think so <laughs> um Okay, so uh, as you see here, uh, only the Zendesk uh, has the green score, and then we have Synthetics, and then we have the Cloud Tutorial. Okay, so we're actually looking at the wrong page. My my bad. Um, I pulled up the home page. So oh, we we're supposed to be looking at FAQ. Um, I will send it over to you on the. On this private chat we have a private chat somewhere in here in Streamyard. and guys oh they're wrong uh uh that's wrong uh one sec uh i just want to give a huge shout out to the Streamyard tool because i'm doing it for the first time in here and it appears to be really really great tool for live streaming uh i really uh uh, like enjoy uh, doing this live stream and yeah, keep up the good work, guys. Okay, so let let let's go back to the um to the page. Am I am I sharing? Or are you sharing now? Yes, you are sharing. Okay, so my bad. Um, we were we we're looking at the home page before this, and and this is actually the page that they submitted. So, um, they've done something here that um a lot of I've seen a lot of SaaS companies do now, and what that is is they've included a you know best of they've included all of their competitors um in this uh faq software with them of course at the top so i have seen this as a strategy for um for uh basically lower authority sites to um rank uh you know for something like best blank software um but the only trade-off that you end up doing is you have to include all of your competitors here as well. So just getting into this, obviously you're going to rank yourself number one. Where do I sign up? Where is the button? Where is the nice image? You know, this totally just falls completely flat for me right here. Um, you you are in control of this page. You obviously put yourself number one. 
put your logo here, put a button here, like make this like way more appealing. That's what I've seen other sites who are doing the same strategy, um, same thing that they're doing. Um, and uh, and it and it works better. And you but what you end up doing is you make the other um, sites that you're reviewing. Why do you have a link to Fresh Desk, Fresh Desk, when you don't even have a link to you know your landing page, a form or whatever here? Like that makes no sense. Using exact matching anchor to yourself, right? Like this is this is a totally different company, right? So like, why why are they suddenly getting a link and and nobody else is getting a link? It's just a bit odd. Um, you know, Zoho Desk as well. Um, Happy Fox, but not type form. Um, so yeah, I think you're you're basically just you've the reason why you have a high content score is because you're probably hitting on a lot of those um, entities and um, you know important keywords, and also um, you're mentioning all the other companies that are doing FAQ software. Um, but you're really doing yourself a disservice by not making you as like the um the primary sort of obvious choice and the other the other thing i'll kind of mention here is like anytime you would do a heat map on a page like you'll notice like the above the fold is going everyone is going to see it you know down towards this point only um like 50 percent of people have scrolled down that point and then by the time you're here like 90% of people have not scrolled down that far, especially when you consider this on mobile. So first of all, you putting everybody's logo here is um, telling you know everybody that there's like all these other companies to consider, whereas you don't even need to put this, you could just have your logo and, um, and you could have something like right at the top or like the be you know 10 best FAQ softwares and then um, uh, you write at the beginning so that you're capturing all those people who are not going to scroll down further than like 20% okay. down the page. This, this introduction is 100% fluff. Like, don't worry, your organization, blah, blah, blah. Who is going to read this? I mean, I never read this. I just skim the content. Like, when, when I see something valuable and it is hidden below, then it's really hard for me to, uh, like... Uh, say that this page helped me because it didn't because i i wasted my time about not worrying about my organization right i uh, agree and, and why would you put a table of contents here that makes it easier for somebody to skip to your competitor and miss you <laughs> right unfortunately there are some uh serious issues to this landing page from the conversion perspective from the seo perspective is not bad because it's heating the content and this is when uh you have the situation of uh like seo not being everything uh because you already have some sort of authority some sort of credibility from google that ranks you on the second page of google with with not so strong domain that's that's great but from now on, you have to uh, pay attention to those behavioral signals because traffic will be there. Uh, maybe not too many of visitors because of page two of Google and not so high search volume keyword. Uh, but um, you have to squeeze every single visitor uh, that will 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 be, will land on your website and. Yeah, I, I could buy uh, the fresh desk instead of you just because I found it in like a, like nicer in the table of content or maybe they have nicer logo. I just scrolled there or even misclicked in the table of content. Uh, so uh, yeah, from from my perspective, SEO uh, is fine in here, but uh, take care of uh, the experience. Yeah, and even um, from this soft uh, from this keyword selection FAQ software, um, it's I think it's only getting around like three hundred or so ninety searches per month, whereas knowledge based software gets like thirty six hundred. So you're you're also just on your keyword choice here. Maybe you're going for something that you think is less competitive and all that kind of stuff. But um, I think knowledge base is really what you call this type of product and not just um, FAQ software. Oh, yes, that's that's the biggest. I think that's the like uh, the most important uh, thing uh, about this uh, is the wrong, wrong keyword uh, knowledge base. Yes, 
we were looking for the knowledge base for surfer and obviously i didn't thought about faq but the knowledge base uh, everyone is, is is talking about the knowledge bases uh then the faq faq is for me like this accordion uh, yeah. stuff in on, on on the page and i was wondering how how they do faq software is it a plugin or something like that and in fact it is a knowledge base so yeah um re-optimize this article because it it may be good I, actually i i will check this i will just uh, take over for a second and i will uh plug in this knowledge base software in into the serp analyzer and i will take uh your url as uh as a page to conversion uh in the audit and i i think that i i will find pretty uh pretty high uh scores as well as you mentioned the same competitors and those keywords overlap probably uh competitors on in the top 10 will be really similar to the faq software as it is uh, google can understand that it is most likely the same the same thing so uh it may be just about some uh tweaks uh to uh above the fold section and some headings to to get in there uh, let's see it looks like they used knowledge based software three times um on that on that article but never in a heading oh that's that's important unfortunately they are not ranking for the uh for the keyword knowledge base but yeah there's also this handicap uh uh regarding the oops uh, the url like it's faq not the knowledge base software while everyone let's take a look this is pretty cool i i'm not using serp analyzer that frequently last time but uh i will show you this url uh exact keywords in the url let's see yeah so majority of the top 50 and the whole top five is using exact keyword in the url and they at least like everyone has some partials except like some exceptions but in general everyone has three partial keywords so they use the knowledge the base and the software like almost everyone um so um yeah it will be a good idea to probably 301 this to to the new uh landing page targeting this uh knowledge based software and it's not that bad like over 40 uh, we have some greens, we have some some yellows. Uh, so uh, I would try to probably put it into the content editor and rewrite uh, for the knowledge base software keyword and 301 this article into the new uh, URL uh, knowledge base software. And as we see pages with this uh, domain uh, score four points, another four points, six points five points uh it's not that competitive i know we are two but um it shouldn't be like we have zero uh on the position 21 so it is possible to 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 rank there with like properly optimized content so uh you will definitely have better results with ranking uh for this keyword knowledge based software than for the faq software um anything to ask Steve from your side they, they do actually have a page for knowledge base knowledge management software which is what they're calling it versus knowledge based software so I, I don't know the difference on volume or like cpc on those different keywords but um yeah i i think uh this one is just gonna fall a little bit short i'm not sure if the intent is there and just in general um the conversion on the page is just really bad <laughs> oh mm -hmm. sorry yeah <laughs> mm, that's the on page roast and people are people are thankful for uh saying bad things about these sites because they know where to put their efforts so um feel free to use uh like any kind of words to uh, <laughs> provide the proper expression uh <laughs> so yeah let's let's move on to the next one as it is the last uh serious one uh which is the text to give keyword uh for the a plus a, a plus page um yeah so the screen is yours 
Yeah, so we're on uh, text to give, which um, it's nice that they have a uh, informational video on it because not everyone's going to understand um, what <clears throat> exactly text to give is. I think it's like you get a link and then you put in your credit card number and then you end up giving to a charity. And this keyword is actually very um, like high CPC um, from from what I saw, it was something like twenty dollars. So it's um, it's a really um, high competition keyword. Um, just in general, it doesn't look like this. Um, this must be the H one here. Text to give, mobile fundraising made simple, and then your solution for remote giving. Um, I'll just take a look at the headings here. Um, yes, I was right. This is the H one. So you have pretty much an exact match on. Um, your title tag as well, text to give software, so that's good. Um, the SERP for this also looks um, fairly competitive too, and we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um, your solution for, okay, so I don't see um, much mention of text to give anywhere in your other headings. In fact, all you have is an H1 and an H2, and then you go directly to H4. So what I would probably want to see is a little bit better structure around things like what is text to give giving? Who who benefits from text to, to to give? How much does text to give cost? Right? Like you're 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 sure you're answering that here, but if you answer that in your in your headings and then have a little bit more content around that, I think you give Google a better indication that you're sort of holistically covering this topic a lot better. So that that was one um definite um, suggestion that I could give you. Um, like all of this stuff is like super long and like it's hard to kind of, um, like this is a lot, this is a long headline to expect anybody to read. Um, so I would just try and shorten that up. And also the, the manner in which this is um, laid out with these four sort of text areas and also center aligned to me is also really hard to read, especially like on desktop. Maybe it's a little easier on mobile. Um, we are just old and the font is small. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I actually, uh, I actually don't need my glasses for when I read, so I only need them for distance. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, secure giving options, like um, this kind of stuff doesn't really like ladder up to the the main keyword text to give um you know even if you put here like yeah sure it's a little bit of keyword stuffing or whatever but text to give is easy for nonprofits to set up you know um first time first time owner set up with text to um, thing not saying you overkill it but that you find some other areas in your headings to include the words text to give obviously that will be guided by the serp analyzer at least the image all that is just next to uh, this section, right? You can put this uh, keyword if you really don't want to stuff people and make them feel like you are trying to trick them with the shady content. Uh, like using the image alt is just uh, the great workaround for uh, putting those unwanted keyword, let's say, or like not uh, grammatically correct and stuff like that. That's yeah. that. That's my trick for this. Yeah, for sure. I, and I've done that too with success. Th that said, like putting here text to give is easy for nonprofits to set up. Like that's that's not overly, you know, SEO. If you make every one of your headings that, then yes. Um, I also wonder, um, do maybe people type in like the number two? I have no idea, but maybe adding that one or two places wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, just in case people do. Oh yes, they do. Hear it and then put it in. Four hundred eighty a month. Uh, so definitely worth checking out. So do they number text to give? Yeah, and they don't. They only use it in different places. You can see they use it in twenty twenty. They don't use it in mm -hmm. um, that actual spot. So maybe that's a, a good piece of advice for you. Um. Then you've got some trust stuff here. Um, to me, like this is not very trustworthy. <laughs> this is just a blank image of somebody. Um, so maybe put the logo or like better yet, you put somebody's, um, you've just taken these off of GetApp and Captera, I understand, but actually going to your real customers and getting an actual image um, is going to, to help a lot. 
Um, and looks like that's it. Um, but if we um, look at this keyword, this is Canadian results, but um, still um, pretty, uh, um, you know, text to give is the sort of main commercial thing. They've got some site links here. Um, probably either due to some jump links or just maybe some um, additional link internal links on the page. Um, you've got this site, which does an amazing job at um, content creation. Actually, sort of, I think I know who is behind this article, and she does an amazing job with uh, writing content. Um, you've got more or less like informational, um, informational again. Um, this is more of a, a bottom funnel, um, bottom funnel. So just taking a look at these um, these pages that are ranking ahead of you, um, they've got some FAQ software, which is great. Um, what they don't have are any links inside their FAQ software or bullet points to make it look really good. So if you maybe wanted to do some of that, you could. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't look like, I mean, like I mentioned, $20 CPC on this. Uh, $3,600 a month. This is a very competitive keyword. Um, so I would also look at uh, some of these sites. And if you go on a tool like Ahrefs and you see like, well, what are the internal links going to these pages and uh, start to create some content that's similar to that, um, you might have some help uh, with giving some nice supporting content as well. I would just use the content planner for that, uh, for that purpose. That would definitely do the job uh, to, to build this hub of information and if you don't mind i will take over for a second to show you guys that uh we have really decent keyword give by text that is much more natural and has identical search volume as text to give which is uh, 1900 and i quickly checked that this page is not using give by text which is really easy to mix in a sentence with our tool you can give by text something right so uh it will be fairly easy to rank for both of these keywords especially that they share 100 percent relevance which means that most likely there are identical search results for both give by text and text to give so uh really uh, a good opportunity to uh to, to to tackle in this situation and when I was reviewing uh, the search results in here, it it's insane that so weak pages when it comes to either content and domain authority can take the whole top three while uh, while you with the domain of seven points uh, are on position eleven. But even more surprising is that this guy. 82 content 85 content stronger domains and still below so they may be doing either some black hat stuff good black hat stuff that will be worth investigating because if someone with low content score and low domain score is ranking high then it means that they are doing something else really good and that may be well maybe ctr manipulation maybe uh some other shady stuff maybe some some hidden pbms uh, boosting them and with this new majestic feature that will be probably easier to uh, find out those tier two tier three tier four links uh pointing to these guys so definitely uh, i would spend some time on investigating why they are so high with such a weak content and weak domain uh, but uh, Besides that, I would just exclude these two guys because I don't want them as the benchmarks and run a quick audit on this um, URL to find out that I'm obviously uh, too short considering the majority. And next thing is that I'm really missing uh, a lot of NLPs and contextually relevant terms, uh, which makes it super easy to fix like you take your landing page uh you insert those terms that you have used zero times like fundraising strategy why is it not used uh, on this page that be like text to give is core element of any fundraising strategy 
or at least I think it is. So uh, it will be just, uh, uh, well, I don't know, uh, ignorance maybe, or like providing the content that, um, I don't know. I don't know why, but I would definitely rewrite this landing page using either the editor or the audit to find uh, those contextually relevant terms because you are already 11, position 11 with one of the strongest domains in the whole set of domains ranking currently. It's in, like it, it's, it's the best starting point you can have with the on-page optimization. So, um, I bet that spending 30 minutes on this landing page can do miracles when it comes to getting into the top 10 at least. So, uh, yeah, those are my two cents on this page. Yeah, I agree. Like, and you don't even have that much content to begin with. So spending a little bit of time, you know, adding four to 500 extra words or, you know, even less than that, just to cover off some of these main terms, um, you're going to put yourself in pretty good shape. Um, I would also mention that, like, I think the, um, the design of this site is starting to look a little bit dated. I would guess that this site probably hasn't been redesigned for maybe five or six or seven years I can um, in the top. Yeah. So, so just thinking about, um, that as well, like, um, you know, maybe that plays well with your, with your customer base of like nonprofits and churches and organizations, maybe they don't expect a big, a nice flashy, like, you know, site like this or site like, um, you know, site like uh, Delight Chat or whatever. Uh, maybe they don't expect that, but um, eventually I think you're, you're gonna start to, um, you know, gain a little bit less trust or not appear. You're, it's gonna be like when you're being compared against other sites, you're gonna be judged on, on the design of your site as well. So just something to think about in the next like year or two. Um, but yeah, I think uh, overall what Michael is saying is you have a lot of opportunity. You're in a very good striking distance for this. Probably right around this section of giving additional gifts is a place where you can add a lot more content um, to hit all those NLP terms. And just after you've done that, like uh, maybe add that, maybe add text to give, give by text, um, all of those things as variations in your headings. Um, make you know, don't just rely on one H1 and one H2, add some H2s in there that are nice and relevant. Um, and then, you know, you'll probably be in a very good position um, after Google crawls your page once you made those changes. For me, it is a little bit like a risky niche, let's say, because uh, like probably some scammers may try to uh, tackle this to steal the money on so or stuff like that. So, uh, adding a little bit more credibility for the users, like we have the testimonials at the very bottom. Uh, it, 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 it means that, well, mm, and the other one without, uh, without the logo or a photo, it is, is looks suspicious. So uh, for me, it, it, it may be something that will differ you from the other guys, why I don't want to buy from you. And again, uh, uh, just a quick summary of why this page may not be ranking in the top 10 with pretty strong domain, probably well-established brand, pretty old. Uh, it may be because of those behavioral signals. Maybe they were in the top 10, but people judge this page negatively because of its design and lack of trust, for example. And Google like drop this page uh, just because of these signals. We don't know. We don't know the history of this website, but that's one of the scenarios that could happen. One very last thing I just want to mention about these testimonials is you're just grabbing them off of GetApp, Captera, and Captera here again. So I would really focus on getting some very real and concrete, um, uh, you know, um, testimonials. And here it just says, you know, I found a great donation platform. This software is awesome. This software is great. Instead of Hey, we raised ten thousand dollars in one week using text to give. You know, Th that kind of a testimonial is going to be so much more powerful than just somebody saying they found the right software. Yeah, and well, it's much harder to acquire a testimonial for a captor or G two or something like that because they have those forms, they have those like verification stuff like that. And if you reach out to one of your clients, it it should be fairly easy. And if they care about the SEO, 
uh, they will provide you one of the best testimonials ever because you will give them a link or a mention. So, uh, yeah, yeah it, it, it will be super easy to get it. I Only can give you a testimonial. Mm -hmm. dude. I can give you a testimonial, really. Steve probably too. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if you, if you position yourself uh, the right way and uh, give something away for the testimonial, it will be really easy to acquire those rock solid uh, uh, social proofs. Yeah, call them. Uh, just go and get in touch with them and say, We'd love to feature you on our homepage. We'll give you a link from our homepage. Done deal. Yeah. Uh, great, great, great. So uh, I know we already passed one hour, eight minutes ago. Uh, what about the bonus space, Steve? Real quick. Yeah, let's do the bonus. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So we have a fun one for you guys today. Cardiff, uh, full of bounce. So this is bouncy castles. Oh boy. <laughs> um, where to start? So one thing that's just very, very odd to me here is the homepage link is in the middle of the navigation. I don't think I've ever seen that before. It's not going to tank your site, but it's going to make it hard for people to get back to the homepage once they're on any of these other pages. So just bringing that right over here where you usually have it is going to just be no uh, a lot more normal. Um, so just clicking around this site, um, we've got a lot of busyness going on, obviously. Um, I'll just get right to some of the fun stuff down here. Um, we have a bunch of SEO landing pages, Bouncy Castle, Hire Cardiff, all these different um, uh, geographies for different Bouncy Castle places. Um, I would just check to see if these are actually working for you. Um, probably some of them are, but it also looks very sketchy to have them down here and also to have all these keywords just like put, might as well put maybe at some point these were white on white text and then they decided to <laughs> give them a highlight color. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Uh, but you know, you've got like doing just some very odd stuff here, like bouncy castles, Cardiff, right? Like if you're, if this is like, I'm not saying this is what, um, the page, um, SERP analyzer added, but like literally you took suggestions and then just pasted them in to the content without thinking anything. So, you know, like that, this just, if I was a parent and I was looking to get a bouncy castle, like I would think this is like totally sketchy. Like it's even just like highlighted. I don't, I don't know. Like, is that worth it to have a, that as a reflection on your business? Probably not. But quick question, Steve, have you checked their rankings? No, uh, I haven't. I just, <laughs> don't, don't be the, 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 like the critic because uh, they are top one for the keyword. I, I didn't say it didn't work, but I, I, I did say that if, if you want that to be a reflection of your business, then, you know, that's your choice. But this, yeah, yeah. This is probably, I, I'm going to guess that this is, an SEO um, agency or consultant who just has free reign to do whatever and like literally did the laziest possible keyword stuffing that they could do. <laughs> uh, whatever, if it works, right? But yeah, for sure. Uh, from the business perspective, this website is kind of like, it's totally the opposite what Google is expect to bring us right uh it should be down 10 years ago uh with this kind of uh thing let's say uh but apparently uh is not only ranking of the position one for the bouncy castle higher cardiff but it also uh stays there and it means that well, not too many negative behavioral signals are coming through this page as uh they are still on the top one and the domain is not super strong. I can see that it's only a two, uh, but someone did a great job with on-page optimization as the score is 84, like doubled the, the other guys. So, uh, well, <laughs> I don't I know. What guess there's not a ton of competition for bouncy castles in Cardiff as well. Um, so uh, there's also, when I clicked around this site as I'm doing right now, there was a lot of pages that just didn't work or were totally empty. 
Uh, these ones look good, but there was just a lot of stuff that like wasn't working properly um, that, that I noticed that they might want to pick. I, I didn't grab all of them there, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is, right? But uh, um, I would still, um, you know, if I was if I was the owner, and which obviously this owner doesn't even look at the inner pages of their website, um, would probably want to uh, at least like try and improve this, like go hire a writer who's like, you know, five cents a word and just get them to write this in there. I will ask you a tricky question. Uh, if you were to take take it over, uh, no matter why, let's assume that you are taking it over. Uh, how would you deal with uh, redesign and re-optimization as the positions are already established and like, uh, uh, from my perspective, it is always hard to touch something that is already ranking uh, from a reason that you don't know, right? Because you can always mess it up just by making it better. And yeah, I'm just curious what you say. That's a great question. I mean, would I touch it in the first place? Hell no. <laughs> but, um, like, yeah, how, what would you? What would you do if somebody gave you this site? Um, what would you what would you do to improve it, right? Well, anytime you redesign a, a, a site or add, you know, like a new layout and stuff like that, you obviously risk uh, chances of messing up the rankings. So, um, you know, I, I would probably just like, um, just incorporate those keywords a little bit more naturally because if I'm, if I'm, if I'm a parent and I see that this, this site is just like literally copied in and just pasted keyword, keyword, keyword after each sentence, I would be turned off and I would probably not, I would probably choose another company that didn't do that. How biased are you? <laughs> Sorry? Uh, how? How biased, biased are you uh, because of working in SEO and that you know that is a scum? Yeah, I would. Um, and in general, I would, I, even if I didn't, if I wasn't an SEO, I'm sure my wife, if she saw this, she thought she would think it's a bit, um, sketchy as well. Um, and I don't know, like these sites, the site's funny to me because like, like it looks like it's designed for a kid, but like, it's actually the parents that are on this site. So I don't know. It, it, I mean, if it works and the business is like, you know, good and things are, you know, booming in the world of bouncy castles and by all means, leave it alone and just, you know, let the site ride its life and hopefully another competitor doesn't come along and makes it look a lot more professional at which time then maybe you want to look at doing something oh yes that's that's true um so uh we took care of all of these pages we have planned and it's not that long because we exceeded by just 15 minutes. So um, I just wanted to say a big thank you, Steve, for joining me today because um, well, that's some sort of anniversary, the 10th on page, Rose. I'm super happy to, to have you uh, on this special date. Uh, and well, I think that's also a good time to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, right? Yeah, for sure. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas, everybody. Okay, so thanks for watching. Thanks for everyone who is watching the recording. Have a great day. Have a great evening and Merry Christmas. Happy New Year and see you in 2021. Hopefully a bit better than this one. And if you're looking for a bouncy castle, just remember fullofbounce.com. <laughs> cheers, cheers, guys.